so section 5.7 is really similar to what we've been doing, only now we're just going to use uh, what's called rational exponents. So do you guys remember how you put in like a cube root into your calculator? Do you remember how I told you to do that? So if I wanted the cube root of 8, how would I put that in? 8 raised to what power? One third. One third, right. So that's basically what we're doing in this section. We're talking about uh, what it means to have a rational, so a fraction for an exponent. All right, so the exponent 1 over n indicates the nth root. So like I just said, if we wanted to put in the cube root of 8, we learned that we could put it in as 8 raised to the 1 third power. So that means the cube root of 8, which is 2. Okay, but if I have the exponent m over n, that indicates the nth root raised to the nth power. So that's an interesting one. So if I had um, 64 to the 3 over 2. The bottom number is your root. The top number is your power. So we would have the square root, so it's like a 2's there, but you don't have to write the 2, right, um, of 64, and then that's going to be raised to the third. Or you could also see it as the square root of 64 to the third. So it doesn't matter where you put that power. It can be inside the root part or it can be on the outside. I think it's easier to think of it on the outside because a lot of times these will come out nicely. Like see how you have the square root of 64? So what's the square root of 64? 8. So you get 8 to the 3. I don't know that one. So 5, 12. So when we hear radical form, radical means with the root sign, and rational form means with the um, rational exponent. Okay, so radical means with the radical sign, like the square root sign. Okay, so write the expression in radical form and simplify. So if I have negative 32 to the 3 fifths, the bottom number is my root, so I have a little 5 in my root, and the top number is my power. So that's how you would rewrite it. What's the fifth root of negative 32? <laughs> you guys can't do it in your head. Caitlin, do you know it in your head? <laughs> Turn. Yeah, it's negative 2. So negative 2 times itself five times gives you negative 32. All right, so I have negative 2 to the 3. So now negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. So your answer is negative 8. Okay, so write each expression using rational exponents. So we're going to rewrite with rational exponents. So if I have 13 uh, with the power is 4 and the root is 8, that's 13 to the 4 eighths, which is 13 to the 1 half. Okay, you could also have that as the square root of 13. But since it said rational exponents, we'll leave it as 13 to the 1 half. Okay, the next one I have 3 to the 15, and then the root was 5, so 15 over 5, which is 3 to the 3rd power, which we know is 27. And the next one I'm going to have 11 to the 6 cube root, so it's 11 squared, which is 121. So rational exponents have the exact same properties as what we had before with integer exponents. Remember, like if I had x, like x squared times x cubed was x to the fifth, you add your exponents. Same thing here. So you can add your exponents. Okay, so product of powers to multiply powers with the same base, add the exponents. So if I have x to the one half times x to the three fourths, got many fractions. So it's x to the 2 fourths times x to the 3 fourths. Add your exponents and you get x to the 5 fourths. Make sense? Just add the exponents. Okay, quotient of powers, same thing, only now if you have division. So if I had x to the 2 thirds over x to the 1 third, you subtract your power. So it's x to the 2 thirds minus 1 third. 
So it'd be x to the one third. Power of a power, so if I have x to the one third and it's raised to the sixth, you multiply the exponents. So it's x to the one third times six, which is x squared. Power of product, if I have x to the one third times y to the one fourth and I'm raising it to the twelfth, you bring that twelve into both pieces, so you're multiplying the exponents. So you'd get x to the fourth, y to the third. Okay, and power of a quotient, so same thing. If I have x to the 5 sixth over x to the, not x, let's do y, y to the 2 thirds. And I raise it to the sixth. You get x to the fifth over, you'd have 2 thirds times 6. So 12 over 3, which is just 4. So y to the fourth. Make sense? Okay. Okay, a rational exponent is simplified when it has no negative exponents. So just like before, we don't, we don't have negative exponents in our answer. Um, there's no fraction ex, fractional exponents in the denominator. So think about that. If I had x to the one half and it was in the denominator, x to the one half is the square root of x, right? And just like before, we couldn't have square roots in the denominator, we conjugated. So we're not going to have any like fractional exponents in the denominator. Um, it's not a complex fraction. By that, I mean something like uh, 1 half divided by 3 fourths. You're not going to have something like that. Um, and then the index of any remaining radical is as small as possible. So um, you're not going to have all well, the index. So like if I had the cube root of x to the sixth, you've reduced that. So you wouldn't have an index of three anymore. Um, let me think of another one. I don't know. I'm trying to think of one. I'm sure we'll see one. Okay, so number one. So I have seven to the seven ninths over seven, or times seven to the eleven ninths. Okay, so we just add the exponents. So I'm going to have seven to the seven ninths plus eleven ninths. So it's 7 to the 18 over 9, which is 2. So your answer is 49. Okay, this one I have 16 to the 1 sixth over 2 to the 1 third. Okay, I know I can't have um, 2 to the 1 third in the bottom. I can't have like the cube root of 2 in the denominator. So think about how you can get rid of the cube root of 2. What could you do? Close. Not the cube root of 2. So let's go, go back to the original and think of it. We need the cube root of what? So if it was just the cube root of 2, then on the bottom we have cube root of 4, which doesn't help us. What can I take the cube root of? <coughs> think of numbers you can take the cube root of. 8. So see how if you multiply on the top and bottom by cube root of 4, <coughs> that would help us out. So now I'd have cube root of 8 on the bottom. Um, because now you have the cube root of 8 on the bottom, which is 2. So let me erase this part. We'll just do it with our roots. So I have 2 on the bottom. We're not allowed to have any fractional exponents in the denominator. Okay, now 16 to the 6th, or 16 um, with the root of 6. So 16 to the 1 6th. This one's actually a little bit hard. Okay, and the other one was 4 to the 1 -third that's on top. If you guys see that, this is 4 to the 1 -third power. Okay, so I'm going to write it as 16 to the 1 -sixth times 4 to the 1 -third. This one's a tough one. How can I rewrite 16 so that I use 4 somehow? Like 16 is 4 raised to what power? 
Right, so let's rewrite. So I'm going to have 4 to the second to the 1 sixth times 4 to the 1 third. Okay, so that's all over 2. So this is 4 to the 1 third then. So you multiply your powers. So 2 times 1 sixth is 1 third times 4 to the 1 third divided by 2. Add your powers, you get 4 to the 2 thirds all over 2. Okay, this actually reduces down even more, too. This is a tough one. I wouldn't put one like this on your test. Okay, so if I have 4 squared and then under a cube root, remember 4 squared? How we simplified roots the other day. 4 squared is 16, so it would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So can you simplify the cube root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? Yeah, how would you simplify it? I know. 2 cube root of 2, right? So it would be 2 cube root of 2. Okay, so that's how we want this simplified. So it would be 2 cube root of 2 all over 2, which is just the cube root of 2. So maybe an easier way to think of it is maybe at this step, if we had written this as 2 to the 4th, raised to the 1 6, so 2 to the 4 6, and then this as 2 squared, raised to the 1 3rd. So like that, maybe we could have gotten there faster. All right, you guys try number 3. So you guys can do number 3 for sure. So they have the same base, they're both 16. So it's kind of like if I had x to the 3 fourths over x to the 5 fourths, you just subtract their powers. So that's what we're doing, we're just subtracting the powers. So I'd have 3 fourths minus 5 fourths, which is 16 to the negative 2 fourths, so negative 1 half. Okay, a negative exponent, remember that means 1 over. So I have 1 over 16 to the 1 half. So is that my final answer? What's 16 to the 1 half? What does that mean? Yeah, it's square root. So I have square root of 16, which is 1 fourth. So your answer is 1 fourth. So let's try 4, 5, and 6. So number 4. So I have the 6th root of 4x to the 4th. Okay, so this would be 4 to the 1 6 times x to the 4 6. And let's rewrite 2, or 4 as 2 squared. So this is 2 squared to the 1 6 times x to the 2 thirds. I'm going to reduce that. <coughs> so it's 2 to the 1 third times x to the 2 thirds. You can leave it like that if it asks for rational exponents. Or you can think about what this is saying. This is the cube root of 2 times the cube root of x squared which would be the cube root of 2x squared. Okay, so that's simplifying number 4. So see how it, it's not, it doesn't really look like the same, but it is the same thing. We've simplified it. Kind of like reducing fractions. That would be the re most reduced one. So that's what it meant by number 4 when it said the index of any remaining radical is as small as possible. So we had an index of 6, but we reduced it down to an index of 3. Okay, next one is negative 8 to the negative 1 third. So if I have a negative 1 third power, I'm going to think of it as 1 over. 
So it's going to be negative 8 to the positive 1 3rd power, which is 1 over 1 3rd power is the cube root of negative 8, which would be 1 over negative 2, so negative 1 half. And then number six, I have y to the one-half plus one all over y to the one-half minus one. And I give you a hint. I said, what does it mean to have a one-half power? So what's a one-half power again? Square root. So right now I have, this is like the square root of y plus one over the square root of y minus one. In the, in the last section, we learned that we can't have square roots in the denominator. So when I have something like square root of y minus one, what do you multiply by to get a rational number on the bottom? Remember what we need to rationalize? Uh, what was it? Square root of y plus 1, right? Square root of y plus 1. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of y plus 1 on the top and bottom. It's called the conjugate of the denominator. Okay, so when I do that on the top, I get y, because square root of y, I'd have a square root of y is y. My outer and inner are both square root of y, so plus square root of y plus square root of y. My last is 1. And on the denominator, I get y. My outer is square root of y, and my inner is negative square root of y. That's why we did this, so the square roots would go away. Minus 1. So those are gone. So on the top, you have y plus 2 square root of y. plus 1 over y minus 1. Okay, so fractional exponents are used all the time in like real life problems. So here's an example. I mean, I don't <laughs> usually talk about the uh, weight that someone can lift, but this is what it's saying. So it says the formula m equals 512 minus um, 146,230 b to the negative 8 fifths. Uh, can we use to estimate the maximum total mass that a weightlifter um, of B kilograms can lift in two lifts combined? Okay, so U.S. weightlifter Oscar Chaplin III weighs 77 kilograms. What is the maximum amount he can lift? Okay, so that means that B is 77 kilograms. That's how much he weighs. So the mass is going to be 512 minus 146230, 77 to the negative 8 fifths. So I would put this all in my calculator at once. I would put it in as 512 minus 146230 times 77 raised to the, and make sure when you do fractional exponents, you put them in parentheses, so like that. So I got 371.831 kilograms. All right, B, his total in the 2000 Olympics was 335 kilograms, so in two lifts. So compare this to the value predicted by the formula. Does that make sense that he would get 335? Yeah, because the max that he could possibly get was 371. So he's almost like completely maxed out. That's almost more than his body could handle. So yes. Um, the max was 371.8 kilograms. So you could say that was the max, but he almost has reached his maximum amount. That's it. Okay, so convert your answer from part A to pounds by the conversion one pound equals 0.4536 kilograms. So hopefully you guys have taken chemistry. I think all of you guys are sophomores, right? Or juniors. So you have... Um, we had 371.831 kilograms, and we want to convert it to pounds. So when we do conversions, we put kilograms on the bottom so that the kilograms are going to cancel. And we put pounds on top. And we said one pound, I guess pound, not pounds. So one pound 
was 0.4536 kilograms. So the kilograms cancel. That's why you're left with pounds. Okay, so take your answer that you already have in your calculator and divide by 0.4536. So I get 819.734 pounds. It's a lot of weight. <laughs> Can you imagine lifting that over your head? But I think it's in two lifts combined, right? So it means you probably had about 400 pounds of both of them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can't even bench press the bar, <laughs> so lifting, you know, four pounds of overhead doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs>